Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, February 16th, around 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. A coronal mass ejection is headed our way due to a plasma filament that erupted a few days ago. Impact is expected Friday evening. This could bring geomagnetic storms and aurora to sky watchers. But the big story, tornado warnings issued as severe weather threat extends from the Gulf Coast to the Great Lakes. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now Reed Timmer is down there in the south looking for some twisters and severe storms are expected in the south and Ohio Valley today and into tomorrow. Tornadoes, damaging winds and large hail are all threats. Areas of concern from parts of Louisiana, eastern Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and western Georgia into Kentucky, southern Indiana, Ohio, northwestern PA, and southwest New York. So big area here. Take a look. This is the severe thunderstorm forecast through tonight with the biggest threat here in the red, in the bullseye. Now winter storm is hitting today. With likely heavy snow throughout Iowa, as Las Vegas sees its first snowfall ever on Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day brought Las Vegas its first Las Vegas its first snowfall ever since records began back in 1937, and that's a boom. Slick roads reduced visibility as snow falls in southern and central Iowa. Flood watch has been issued for Louisville and surrounding areas as the storm rolls through Kentucky. It's getting quite plucky out there. I just took a look at the hail map for today. No, it was yesterday. Take a look at this. 59,000 reports of hail one inch or larger. That is a huge report, especially for this time of year. Springfield, Missouri got hit. Memphis, St. Louis, Missouri. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Little Rock, Oklahoma City, Fort Smith, Arkansas. I'm sure if you live in these places, you know you got hit. As weather hazards continue from the strong central U.S. storm, heavy rain in Hawaii as well, heavy snow, blowing snow, and a wintry mix will produce hazardous travel from the central plains to the Great Lakes. Severe storms with all hazards, including potential for strong tornadoes and heavy rain that could cause flash flooding, will persist in the Mid-South and develop across the central Gulf Coast states. A Kona low will produce heavy to excessive rain across Hawaii as well. As you can see, those warnings are up for most of the Hawaiian Islands. Take a look at the winter storm watches and warnings as a strip of snow will move through the northern plains into the northeast. And there are your severe thunderstorm watches, warnings, and flood threats east or west of the Appalachians there in West Virginia. Let's take a look at the snow. Oh, there's that system developing. You see there is some icing in there as well as sleet and a mix right along the frontal boundary as it moves through Friday into Saturday there. So it'll be snowing up in Maine all, all day Saturday. Probably get some big totals. And let's take a look at those totals, shall we? So we're going to walk it through. Here is your Friday through Saturday morning. The system will have already moved up to the northeast, and the snow will begin falling in Maine Friday morning. So take a look at that. Could be seeing 16 inches in some places in northern Maine. Uh, as well as heavy totals, 8 to 10 maybe in central Michigan. And then another system is going to drop down through the Pacific Northwest here on Monday into Tuesday, bringing heavy snow to northern Idaho as well as Washington State and Oregon. And then that's going to move through Wyoming down into the Four Corners region and produce a band of heavy snow through the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Wisconsin with a large swath of 16 inches potentially for a huge portion of the plains there. And then more heavy snow for the northern tip of New England, including northern the Adirondacks, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Let's take a quick look at the European snow forecast. It should be snowing in Scotland by Saturday, and then more heavy snow will be coming to England Wednesday, February 22nd, when snow moves into the Alps as well as Spain and down into northern Africa. Take a look. Big winner, Australia, or Australia, Austria and Switzerland as well. That's a whole different place. Hawaii's M4.8 Valentine's Day earthquake was a part of an ongoing seismic swarm. 
And it seems that that has quieted down. There are no quakes showing up from Hawaii. We just had a rocker 4.0 in Susitna, Alaska. What's going on over here? 4.9 in Ambon, Indonesia at a very deep depth. Block echo right there. Hopefully we don't have a big quake on the surface. We had a relatively large, appears to be deep injection well, frac type quake in Texas, a 4.7, followed by an aftershock. A big aftershock as well today in Turkey, 5.2. So our prayers and thoughts still going out to those people affected in those regions. And people are still being pulled alive from the rubble. Worldwide Volcano News Update, nothing much to report on all is, well, erupting as normal. As we take a look at that coronal mass ejection in the form of a plasma filament, which left the sun early, late on the 14th, early on the 15th here, and is modeled here on the WSA Enlil spiral to make pretty significant impact as far as plasma density late on the 17th, early on the 18th. And according to the official forecast, could bring us up to KP6. So low-level geomagnetic storm, maybe some good aurora to take a look at. Aurora's currently poor. And you can see from another weak coronal mass ejection, we got pushed up into low-level geomagnetic storm over the last 24 hours. But nothing spectacular. The sun, the solar indices are continue to drop off a cliff, even though we do have some sunspots on the visible disk, albeit it is solar max. Just not a lot of maximum activity. Here is the... Most recent HMI intensity, and we can see that there is a sunspot system coming around the limb there, high up in latitude. So, heads up. Fascinating find coming from across the pond, record-breaking footprint found on England's dinosaur coast. More than three feet long, the footprint was made by a meat-eating pteropod dinosaur almost 166 million years ago from the Jurassic period. Yes, kids, it's just like Jurassic Park. A new giant theropod dinosaur track from the Middle Jurassic of the Cleveland Basin, Yorkshire, and the UK. Hey, hey. Now, this find is spectacular. You can see there's dino prints at all those different levels there. And here we can see the actual outcrop where the print came from here. Quite fantastic. Here is a large picture of the actual print. Why am I talking funny? And it is a large print indeed. Three foot of print. And the creature, well, it was terrifying. If this foot is three feet, this thing is 20 feet long and could bite your body in half, well, instantly. So, very terrifying animal. Please do not reanimate this one. Global temperature conundrum. Was the earth cooling down or heating up before global warming? Well, it's all made up anyway, kids. And the paper basically proves that. Take a look at this graph. There's the fake hockey stick, which isn't happening. And all the rest of the models show it's been cooling for thousands of years. Yes. And in fact, thousands of years ago, it was warmer than it is today on many of these data sets. So that is the conundrum. Lies. Now take a look at this. Officials in Hidalgo County in Texas, multiple agencies are looking into cause of a loud blast in the mission area. Rio Grande Valley officials held a press conference Thursday morning in mission to provide an update on the possible meteorite heard and felt in the area. Let's take a look. Like, I'm take a listen. Thank you for being here. Uh, Sheriff Eddie Guerra, uh, we had our FBI partners uh, that were helping us with this incident. We had uh, DPS uh, that was here with us yesterday and Constable Precinct 3 and all other agencies that assisted uh, in, in different ways. So what happened yesterday uh, at about 5.28 uh, p.m., uh, we started uh, receiving a bunch of calls regarding a large explosion or a boom. Uh, he said a boom. Uh, as a result of that, uh, that, we received multiple reports of houses that were shaken. Um, and, and so it, it created panic throughout the city. And wow, that sounds like, like a call. meteorite or a sonic boom, perhaps. So, pretty interesting developing story coming out of Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. Wild bird flu. Will bird flu spark the next pandemic? Guys, you've been following this. I know you have with a lot of the chickens. 
A dramatic series of outbreaks is leading to concerns that mutation could eventually hit humans and make COVID-19 seem like, well, a pandemic. The bird flu outbreak has taken an ominous turn. The avian flu has killed millions of chickens, decimated wild birds, and has moved into mammals. Now the poultry industry needs new measures to stop its spread. And it gets worse than that. But first, did you know this week in Argentina and Uruguay declared national health emergencies following outbreaks of the highly pathogenic avian influenza H5N1? The fast-moving virus that destroys poultry flocks and wild birds and for decades has been feared as a possible spark for a pandemic among people. Now, the death rate in humans is scary. Almost in some between 30 and 60% depending on the outbreak. And controversial experiments have actually been done to make bird flu more risky or dangerous. It's absolutely insane. In 2011, Fouchier and Koweka alarmed the world by revealing they had separately modified the deadly a avian H5N1 influenza virus so that it spreads between ferrets. Advocates of such gain-of-function studies say they can help public health experts better understand how viruses might spread and kill tons of people on the planet absolute insanity and this influenza has now been detected in a bobcat in butte county in california so it is spreading amongst mammals and it has taken an ominous turn now this is a fantastic piece of art that i dug up by charlie happy heart done in 2016 american indian tribal stars very fascinating, and it is pertinent to the work we're going to be doing on geoglyphs up in Idaho at the Camas Prairie this summer, which tribes like the Nez Perce constantly move about and the Shoshone. That's a boom, the knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Smash that thumbs up and be safe. And that's a boom. Mm -hmm. Check out the interview that Leah and I did with Rex Bear earlier yesterday.